Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna to be walking through the process of me ordering all of the pieces necessary to upgrade my raised train track. I also built this the other day, and this was a prototype for the straight road plate which accommodates the raised train track. You can see I've tiled off the raised train track. It looks way better in my opinion, and I've used various arches in different colors and different styles to try and create something that I want to move forward with. And what I'm going to move forward with is this right here. It uses the inverted arch on the bottom and the large arch on the top. And it just looks really good, especially when you compare that to the black pre-molded pieces. That doesn't look too good. So yeah, today I'm going to be ordering all of the pieces necessary to do that. Also, in addition to those pieces, we're going to be ordering all of the necessary pieces to upgrade all of the raised train track here in the Lego City. Which also includes all of the supports along the back wall here that support the train track. Rather than using these pre-molded pieces, I'm going to be using some large arches and pillars. Also, all the track here in the amusement park is going to get upgraded as well. It's going to be completely redone. You're no longer going to see these black pieces in the city. These upgrades are going to take a ton of parts and ordering those parts is not the easiest thing on the planet. There's a lot of calculating, price comparing, and just meticulous details that have to be factored in when ordering these pieces. Just to ensure that I get the right quantity of pieces so that I can complete this project in one go and also making sure that I get a good deal on these pieces to keep it somewhat affordable. Now before I go ahead and show you how I'm going to go about ordering all of the pieces to do this, we have to build one more prototype using this arch here. Because there's no longer going to be these pre-molded pieces supporting the train track. Rather, it's going to be an arch with a support pillar. But I've got to build one to sort of see what it looks like and also find out what pieces we need to order in order to do that. So let's start with that. This is my prototype for the arches coming off the retaining wall. Don't mind the colors. I don't have any more light gray arches. Like I said, I've got to order more. But yeah, we need the light gray arches, some 1x1 one one bricks, some 1x2 bricks, 11 stud, 1 by plate on the top there. So whatever combination works. And then we need a pillar of light gray bricks. You can see it right here. I can use one by one bricks or the pillars, the one by one by five or one by one by three or one by one by four. Essentially any combination of those is gonna work. And that's what it looks like with the train track mounted. Now, there are three studs open back here. I have to bring the train track out this far because when it comes around the corner, it actually hits the retaining wall, like the top of it because it arches outward. So it has to come out this far, which is actually one stud in on the base plate. A quick note, I'm just editing this right now and I wanna say something about this design. I would love to have it so that it's just arches coming off that wall or bricks coming off that wall because then we wouldn't need those support pillars, but it's just hanging out that far. There's just not enough support. It needs the support pillars. Also in a few clips from now, I come up with a modified design for these arches. And there they are connected. Now in order to build this, it's gonna take a crazy amount of tile. I'm gonna price it out, but I just don't know if I can commit to ordering the tile just yet, because that would be super pricey. I need to find these on my pad wall. I never have, but oh, I wish I could. Now the road plates here, they have two by plate running through the center of the road, creating a median for the two lanes. My plan is to create something similar for the supports that are technically in the grass here and also in the amusement park. However, I don't think they need the bottom underlying connecting plate. They just need the inverted arches and the regular arches to get that same design. Just having a second look at this here, what I could do is put a one by two pillar here and that actually consumes that extra leftover stud. And then there's another stud here. I'll just put a tile there one by three tile there. It just makes this a little bit thicker. I don't know, this looks a little bit scrawny. I think I prefer the look of this. I think with all of that, I have a rough idea of what we need, but now I've got to go through and count quantities of everything so that I can start creating some BrickLink wanted lists. 
So I think the best way to come up with my parts list was to use Excel. So that's what I did. Oh my gosh, this took a long time. Oh wow. And it was just a ton of number crunching. So on the left side here, I've got the parts. And along the top here, I have the different things that we need to create. So for example, the road plates, the grass slash amusement park plates, the wall panels, and then also just straight track. And as you can see, there are 90 of them. Yeah, 90 segments of straight track. There's 26 curves. For right now, I'm not gonna worry about the curves. I just have to come up with a better design for them, I think. The straight tracks, starting with those. So there's 90 of them. In order to tile those off in light gray, you need to use four of the one by eight tiles and eight of the two by four tiles. And I have 90 of them, so you can see how many tiles we need right there to give it that light gray tile top, which looks so good. For the road plates, I need to build 11 of them. That's what's in the bracket up here. That's how many we need. So there's two columns. This column right here is how many parts I need per plate. And then this column right here tells us how many parts we need total. So inverted arches, we need four. Arches, four. Two by two bricks, one by two by five panels, one by two bricks, two by 16 plates, two by six plates, two by eight plates. And then it sort of does all the math for us and that's how many parts we need. We also need some tiles for the bottom of them there. So six of those, we need 66 in total. And then I did the same thing for everything else. For example, the wall panel units, those large arches, we need two per panel. So we need 26 total because we're gonna be building 13 of those and all of the parts are now here. Now the reason I made the road plate one separate from the grass slash amusement park one is once again, we're not gonna do that underlying plate. So I've actually reduced the amount of plate that we need right here just to make sure that it all works out. This was a ton of number crunching to make this all work correctly. And as you can see the total right down here, we need 2,248 pieces. Whoops, I just realized that I made a small mistake. This column right here, was created using the auto sum function, which obviously included all of the individual ones, but these were just there for calculation purposes. So what I should have done is went, uh, this equals this cell plus this cell plus this cell plus this cell. And then of course, just drag that down and that's how you can get the actual numbers. So yeah, just made a small Excel error there, my bad. So now I've got all of those parts in my brick link wanted list. Now I did round up some of the numbers because I don't know, I want some of these parts from my inventory anyway. How do I add them to my wanted list? Well, that's very easy. All you have to do is just search the part name. Just go one by two tile or whatever it is, right? And then you click on the part and then you click on the color you want. For example, most of the ones we want is light gray. And then you can go to add to wanted list. You select your wanted list that you want to add those to. You put your quantity in all the stuff and then you hit add the wanted list and boom, it's there. So now that I've got all this stuff in here, what I could do and what I probably should do is go through all of my parts inventory and update what I already have. Because right here you can see I want 70 of these, but how many do I have? I could go in there and say, oh, I already have 34 two by two bricks. So I no longer need those and fill that number in there and hit save. So then when I go to buy these pieces, I know that I already have 34 of them and I only need 36 more to get the 70 that I need. So I should probably do that. Uh, but with that said, most of these parts are pretty common parts that I want to keep in stock anyway. So do I really want to go take every single one of these out of my inventory? So then when I go to move on to another project, I don't have them. Maybe not. Maybe I want to order all these parts specifically for this project and keep my inventory as it is. I don't know. I've got to make that decision, right? Now, this is uh, the BrickLink wanted list. And of course, buying all these pieces from BrickLink might not be the best option. There's some other things that we have to factor in, such as Lego bricks and pieces. Maybe it's cheaper to buy them from Lego bricks and pieces, which in most cases it is not. For the most part, you can get Lego pieces way cheaper on BrickLink. And that's almost every time other than tiles. I find tiles are actually a pretty good deal on Lego. So I might just go place my tile order with Lego. So I've got to order 720 two by four tiles. How much are those on Lego? You just search two by four tile here and you can see that they're 20 cents on Lego, which really isn't that bad. And you know what? I might want to go with two by two tile, but I think it actually is the same price now because two by two tile is 10 cents a piece. So yeah, it's pretty much the same cost to go with, whoops, two by four. 
Uh, so I may as well go with two by four just because I think it's the design that I want to go with. So what I'm going to do, for example, I have these in my wanted list just because I wanted them there. I'm going to fill these in as if I already have them because I'm going to purchase them from Lego. Also, when you purchase them from Lego, you're going to get your GWP and you're also going to get uh, your VIP points, which is nice. You always got to factor that in. But now that I have those marked as if I have them, they're not gonna be selected when I do the buy all function at the top of the page here. So what I'm gonna do is hit buy all. So I've already been doing some research in regards to this and I know this store right here from South Korea, Happy Eye, has some of those inverted arches and those large arches at a really good price and they have enough in stock that they can fulfill my order. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is select my local seller. So I got Bricklord's tea chest here. I'm gonna see if I can pick up some stuff from him. Yeah, like that looks like a good deal. One by one bricks, 11 cents. Ooh, I can probably get those cheaper from Lego maybe. See, one by one bricks from Lego are only nine cents. So I might wanna get those from Lego. Let's see uh, if I select a different store here. For example, let's select uh, Stings Bricks, another local seller. He's got them for 11 cents too. So I can get them cheaper from Lego and I get my VIP points. What about uh, DD Bricks from Thailand? Uh, he's got them for 10 cents. So the one by one bricks I already know, I'm gonna buy from Lego. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my wanted list and update those quantities. So I'm gonna say that I already have 30 of these because I'm gonna get them from Lego. So let's try this again. Let's select my local seller here. One by three bricks at 10 cents. Those are probably a good deal. 28 cents for these. That's probably a really good deal as well. I don't know if I can get them cheaper from some other sellers. Let's see here. Let's try this one from Thailand. Uh, 15 cents, see? 15 cents each. So that's the best option right there. Crazy, hey? Wow. Uh, one by three bricks, nine cents. Uh, so yeah, like you can get them cheaper from elsewhere. I know that uh, this guy right here, Bricklord's Sea Chest, he has uh, two by 16 plates on for a really good price right now. At least he did, yeah. See, two by 16 plates on for 60 cents. That is a tremendous deal for those because when I go to the Thailand store, for example, two by 16 plates, 37 cents. Oh, wow, 37 cents. Holy cow, that's cheap. Okay, never mind. I gotta get them from Thailand, right? Now, I already have to pay shipping from Thailand, I know that. Oh wow, look at that, that's a ripoff though, $1.18, oh man. So I know that I gotta pay for uh, shipping from Thailand, and I know that I gotta pay shipping from South Korea, so I should probably order those, because look at how much cheaper these are, 13 cents, 27 cents. Like this guy's got some good deals, right? And even his light bluish gray plate, 40 cents. But once again, from Thailand, it's a little bit cheaper. So it's all about going through and finding it for the cheapest price and making sure you can justify those shipping costs. Yeah, it's crazy, hey? Like it's a big game of going through all the different sellers and whether they're local sellers or international sellers or Lego and finding the best price and then referring to your spreadsheet and referring to your wanted list to make sure that you get all of this stuff at a fair price and also that you get it from as few sellers as possible to help reduce the shipping and duty costs when this stuff arrives. Yeah, it's crazy. Just for fun, what I'm gonna do is ignore looking at these sellers and I'm gonna click on the auto select function here and that's gonna let BrickLink do its thing. And it's going to search through the store inventories and place what they believe to be is the cheapest order. And look at that, it got it down to three orders, two of which are Canadian orders, but this one's only valued at $15.90. You know what I mean? Like, oh, like do I really wanna order those from, from them? for $15.90 and have to pay you probably $15 shipping or whatever it is, probably not, right? It's a game, it's it's uh, it's tough, you know, it's tough. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I've gotta go through this stuff and figure it all out. But as you can see, I mean, it's $208.46, but that doesn't include the tiles. So now I've gone to Lego and I've added my two by four tiles, my one by eight tiles, my one by three tiles, my one by one tiles, and my one by one bricks. And the grand total there is $217.80. Just a quick note, I just realized that all the tiles I put in my cart there are white, despite the pictures looking gray. My bad. So it looks like to get everything done, ballpark, uh, we're looking at about four, call it 500 bucks roughly. But that doesn't include the curves. And I also have to go through all of these brick Lincoln stores and order some other stuff that I need like green plates, uh, and other things to finish the ground line curves. Oh wow, I'm just finishing up my Lego order here, which comes to $320 for tiles. Woo, that's crazy. I also added some one by two bricks in there because they found they were a better price. But look at all the free stuff I'm getting. Whoa, good time to place an order right now. So I think I've decided that I'm gonna go with the three sellers that BrickLink recommended to me. 
I've never used these sellers before, but they look like they have really good selection and their prices are fairly decent. So what I'm doing right now is just researching parts. What you can do is just Google parts. So for example, Lego 1x2 plate, and you get the part number 3023. And you can look it up there, 3023. For example, I need more of these 1x2 plates, which are so common on the pad wall, I just can't find them as of late, and I need them for our train tracks. But you can see, I just search it on this store, 3023. I find out that the dark gray ones here uh, are up to about seven cents Canadian when you buy quantities. And then you search it on the next store. And I'm just sort of filling up these carts. See, you got 91 of them here at five cents. And I'm filling up these carts with more parts that I need. And at this point, it's like, okay, I don't really want to pay shipping more than three times. I'm going to limit it to three sellers. Uh, of course, I could use my local BrickLink sellers, which I, I do quite often. That's normally where I start. But in this case, I'm like, okay, I've got to make this shipping justifiable. So I may as well just stick to these three sellers. And even if their prices are a little bit more than my local sellers, it's like, okay, well, I may as well justify these shipments. I'm all about <laughs> making it you know, worth the shipping costs. So now I'm just gonna fill up these carts with different things that I need and continue researching other things that I need. So for example, I need corner plates 2420. So I type in 2420 on their store, oops, and find out how much the corner plates in dark gray are on their store and compare it and then add it to my cart accordingly, just based on the cheapest person. And then eventually I get all of my different carts accumulated and ultimately in the end, place my orders for the raised train track, which is good. So everybody, that's just part of being a Lego city builder right there, ordering parts for projects. And it is an intense job. Like it is one of the hardest parts of building custom Lego. In fact, I think it is the hardest part about building custom Lego. Ordering the parts, knowing where to order them from and getting them at the right price and actually committing to placing the orders is so hard. And then just that dollar amount is just so difficult, you know, because we're going to spend like 500 bucks. I mean, don't get me wrong. When we get this train track upgraded and it's all tiled off, Ooh, it's going to look so good. The curves I'm still working on here. I think I'm going to use some of the wedge plates under there. I was actually mocking one up over here with some random tiles. This might look pretty cool. You can see this one. I've put the wedge plate underneath. There's still a pretty big gap there. I don't know how to fill that gap. What I was thinking is maybe I seen the brick and brood do it. He actually put another train track so another set of curved train track underneath and that actually reinforced the track so then maybe on my curves i can have it with no supports so you get rid of this support and then it'll just be floating there but in order to do that i think i'd have to reinforce it with a secondary track so essentially what i'd do is i'd put another track underneath but i put bricks on all of this on all the available studs and then clip it to this one and then it'd be like super strong and super reinforced. And then I wouldn't have to put supports underneath. And then I'd tile it all off nicely like this. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. I really want to fill this in 100% because when we do that with the straights, it just looks so good, right? Like that looks amazing. But how do I mimic that on the corners? It's tough. I don't know. I think that's a pretty good job there. You can see I need a bunch of two by fours, some one by fours, and some one by twos. So I might order some one by twos and maybe some additional two by fours and some additional one by fours in light gray. And I have a bunch of these circular ones already and maybe some additional one by ones as well just to have them for my inventory. And if this doesn't work out when the order arrives, well, guess what? I always need two by four light gray. I always need one by four light gray. It's not a big deal. But yeah, just wanted to share my process on how I go about ordering parts. You know what? I've always said, I wish that I had access to a huge brick room, like on Lego Masters, because I think that I would actually be a pretty good mock builder if I had access to unlimited parts. But I just think the most difficult thing for me is sourcing the parts. And it's just something about the commitment of ordering parts. And also, I should probably learn how to use Digital Designer because it would up my game as a Lego builder in a big way. But I feel like I could build some pretty cool stuff if I had access to unlimited parts. Because as you saw in previous videos, when I come up with these uh, different 
things, I use the parts from my inventory and it just makes it rather difficult because I only had like one of these arches and I needed four of them. Well, I needed like hundreds of them to do this. But I feel like if I just had unlimited parts, I'd be able to come up with some pretty cool stuff. But yeah, everybody, there's my process for ordering on BrickLink and Lego. Let me know what you think by commenting below and like, subscribe and stay tuned.